<laughs> is there anybody there? Have I, have I missed something, Gary? I don't know. I was I was just finished off a, a Zoom a seance there. So oh. he, caught, he caught me at the end of my you're Zoom. You're mute, Gary. Gary, you're a mute. No, I'm not. <laughs> it's been 12, I nearly swore there, 12 months of Zoom calls and team calls and all of that stuff, Gary. You're on mute. Everybody's heard it at least once, Gary. No, I'm on it. <laughs> How you doing, uh, Mr. Kerr? Are you well? Completely average, which is good for this time of the day. But That's thanks for right. asking, Andy. How are you doing? I'm doing, uh, um, yes, yeah, splendiferous. I'm doing well. It's uh, it's Wednesday. Splendiferous. It's the uh, not only is it kind of past the middle of the week and we're on our way to the weekend. But it's nearly the end of April. We're almost into May, Gary. May next week. Can you believe that? What's happened can, to the can May wait May. Can I wait to May? Because then it'll be nearly time to cast a clout on May's route. Oh, absolutely. Never cast a clout until May is out. Um, because a couple of days ago, it was Scorchio. And then you put your toe at the back. And <laughs> Baltic. I know it was a bit chilly today, but uh, no, all good. Um, good evening, everyone. Uh, good evening, viewer. As Gary good evening to you, the viewer. We've got a few of uh, our regular viewers in the, the, this evening. Great to see you all, as always. Yes, hello, everyone. Hello, viewer. Hello to everyone. Welcome to Chat Show 53. 50, episode 53. Uh, oh, we're getting our formal titles from Elizabeth. Oh. Um, is, is doctor now, uh, Elizabeth? Yeah. Doctor, yeah. That, that sounds like a, an answer from a call center. Oh, exactly, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Gary. <laughs> Mr. Gary, yeah, yeah I don't know, don't know, you know who you're phoning, do you? You don't know who you're phoning. This is, is that Mr. Gary? <laughs> <laughs> yep, careful, careful, Gary. Careful. I, had I, nearly, someone... I nearly did the Welsh there, didn't I? <laughs> I, had, uh, I? I had someone phone me earlier today, and I don't know if I've mentioned this, but I've got um, Rick Astley, never going to give you up, as a bookmark. Oh, so I just, put, I just put the phone on speaker and just I just Rick roll them. It is the way oh. to deal with them. Uh, but I, I get a call from the, the They phone you up now and again. They say you, you've had an accident. <laughs> I don't know. Bing bong. <laughs> anyway, that, that moment has passed. <laughs> that moment. Oh, what's this? Go on. A in, a, in a St. Mun theme. That was St. Mun's opening. Used to run, St. Mun used to run out to that. Oh, the boys are back in town. Yeah. Anyway, clicking away to my heart's content here. You <laughs> all sorts of random stuff appearing on the screen. <laughs> it's great to have everyone tuning in to our 53rd and penultimate show of our first year. I like that word, Andy. Penultimate. And ultimate, I found out what it meant. You look it up in a dictionary, Gary. I did. It was, I, I kind of mind what it was. It, maybe it was going for gold. Remember Henry Kelly? He used to do oh, going yeah. for gold. And here's the penultimate question. I'm like, oh, what's that mean? Penultimate. What does penultimate mean? And then he only had one question left, so I worked it out. Go on. It's the you last one. Figured, you figured out what, what it meant without having to look it up, Gary? I, 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 I confirmed it. <laughs> Oh dear! Do you know there's a word that I need to use tonight? I'll need to think about it. <laughs> is it subsequent? No, it was another one, Gary. Is it an H? Oh, I can't remember. I need to inaugurate. Ah, that's it. <laughs> right, we'll not tell him then, and then right. when you see it, everybody will be dead surprised. Right, okay. I'm going to. I'll, I'll inaugurate that later, Gary. <laughs> that's a cracking word. I came up in a meeting, didn't it? We were sitting at really. Quite important meeting, and someone said homogulate. Homogulate. And, uh, and Andy went off. I'd tell you what happened. Somebody said in this meeting, homogulate. And Andy went off screen. He was away to the Google to look it up. Be <laughs> <laughs> done. Uh, done. Just Google on my finger. Uh, tip scary. Yeah, homogulate. Uh, that was a cracking word. Homogulate. You know, you know who you are. <laughs> anyway, Andy. What's caught your eye this week? 
Oh, uh, well, I tell you what's caught my eye this week, Gary. A couple of things caught my eye this week, and we'll get there in a moment. But yes, uh, come on. hold on to get my images up. Hold on to get my images up. So, Gary, I got a little bit premature last week. Oh, I miss it. On, on the show, I said that I was going to be going to the bungalow event. Oh, I did. Cocktail making and all that. Did you go to it? I got it all wrong, Gary. I actually went to a, it was a gin tasting event which was run by the gantry in yeah. partnership with teardrop gin oh, and wow. um the good lady claire picked up the kit and uh, and um, this is what it looked like through the week this was a uh, friday night in my house gary oh, um, so you're actually with other people oh absolutely so it was jason from the the gantry and did a smashing mm -hmm. job of uh, taking us through four gins telling us all about them how to mix them up and what to pair them with and all that sort of stuff donald uh boyd uh who we've had on the show was talking about teardrop yeah. and uh, all about the the creation and production of that and then there was a, a zoom call full of uh fantastic folk um blaring the way about gin so that that was it didn't catch my eye that that went down the neck gary that was a brilliant night other people landed other folk? You're not having any of that, I'm telling you. That, that'll never catch on. Socialising over Zoom. Never again. Never again. <laughs> I'll be seen in a room with MDLs. So 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 that caught that caught my eye um this week. Um and what what caught my ear this week was this. <laughs> yes, yes, I've I've seen a wee bit of that. That's quite a religious moment. Oh, uh, yeah. And the first three bits of that are pretty well known. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you that perhaps didn't watch uh, Line of Duty this week, and there's certainly no spoilers on this one, but there was a line which was just simply Jesus, Mary, and Joseph and the wee donkey. <laughs> the wee donkey. See if I was. See if that was that person that was getting interviewed across the desk. I, you wouldn't have been able to hold your, you hold your water on that one because it was just, what did he just say? <laughs> Mary Joseph and the wee donkey. What's the wee donkey going to do with anything? Oh, it had me chuckling. But a, a few folk have asked already. Um, and uh, and and guess guess who's rebranded, Gary? I, I, I heard this through the grapevine, Andy, that there's been a rebranding opportunity. There's been a after, after, the last, after last week's Opening back up special, we had uh, Gary and, and Gemma on from uh, the Glenifer, and 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 through the conversation, um, just just these great ideas came out, Gary, didn't they? Oh, it was just a, it was a, a what would you call it? A, a brainstorming marketing branding workshop live on the chat show. Oh, it was amazing. They would have played, paid millions of consultancy fees on this rebrand for the Glenifer, but but. World exclusive tonight, Gary. I think, Andy, this is that exclusive. I don't think Gary and Gemma know about it. <laughs> I don't think they do either. <laughs> and drum roll, please. The rebranding of the Glenifer is very simple. It's just around the corner, Gary. Andy notices the subtle change in the brand. I think people think it's that good, Andy, that it's real. I, oh, that looks that looks cracking. That took me no. all. That took me all of two minutes in Photoshop earlier on, Gary. To... That's just enough. The the merch will be flying out the door, Andy. It's Much just around the corner. It's, that's how people will refer to it. It's just around the corner. And and that's... guess what, Gary? Get guess what? Guess where I'm going for my tea on Friday night? Uh, Alpino's Borhead. No, I'm going just round the corner, Gary. I'm going to the Glenifer for my dinner. Just round the corner. I'm going to table. I'm going to table. But the their market, I think, if they take the the strap line, will be severely limited. You're only allowed to stay like a kind of round the corner to to frequent the premises. Aye, yeah, exactly. It's a, it's, it's, a small lot, it has, it's got a lot of positives, Andy. I'm giving you some feedback here. It's got a lot of positives. Big negative. Big negative. Only, well, aye. I a, restricted, a restricted market. 
It's no round the corner from you, Gary, but there's been a few things happening round the corner from you, is there no? This is seamless. This is amazing programming. Now, to inject a bit of levity to the show and some, and some politics. Oh, politics. Some light politics. Something. Cap capital something, P or a, a lowercase P, Gary? Whatever way you want to look at this. Now, this caught my eye. I, oh, don't. Do I get it, Andy? I'm going to... Oh, wait a minute. I nearly clicked myself off the screen. <laughs> <laughs> this caught my eye. So, being fortunate enough to be able to go to the office in the morning and driving down the hill, this place is right in front of me. And as I come back from the office, this place is to the left of me as I come up the road. And it just strikes me the tragedy that is shivers. And I can't get over the tragedy that is shivers. And I'm and I'm speaking about it seriously and in those terms. Mm. Because it is an absolute tragedy what has happened to that place of work. Mm. Symbolized by Harris Fence all the way down Renfrew Road. And the main building boarded up. Now, it's extra tragedy for me. Never mind it being on my doorstep and round the corner for me. Yep. Generations of families have worked in there. And symbolically, it's gone. Seeing it like that is really, it's, it's tragic. Absolutely yeah. tragic. I guess ultimately, you know, the as much as um, you know, the bulldozers will be in knocking down bits of it, and you know, the clearing out is as well underway. That that building's been so iconic, and and when you see it boarded up, and there's obviously a good reason that it's boarded up, but it's what it symbolises, Gary. That's so painful for you, I guess. Well, but my whole family's worked in there. Aye, from my uh, the, there's pictures in the early days in the sixties of my mum being in there. With her sisters, and latterly, yeah. and latterly, my dad retired from there. Yeah, and it's the the macro level of this, Andy, to use big words here, and and uh, I can't believe that that uh, global brand headquarters of a whiskey, yep, has been absorbed to a back farm area in Dumbarton. Yeah, into, into some corporate thing, and we no longer have a place that Shivers have the global global headquarters. It's yeah. just part of another big thing, and I, yeah. and I'm going to talk about it because I've got the platform here to say it. I don't think that should be allowed. I don't think organisations of that scale should be allowed to tear communities apart the way that Pernod Ricard have done with Shivers. Symbolically identified by the boarding up of it, yeah, on Renfrew Road in my town, yeah, yeah, very cool. Well, Gary, so that caught my eye. Quite, quite right, quite right. And there's nothing we can do about it. No, it's, and I think that's ultimately, you know, I, I, I don't have too much in the way of kind of family uh, connection to Chivas. Um, Claire's uncle used to work there and, you know, what a fantastic community that they had in there. And that's one thing that you hear about the, the community within um, Chivas, the, the employees and, and so on and so forth. Um, my my mum work, worked in Seabagagi around in Hawkhead and my uncle worked there, my cousin worked there. And, and of course, that was another one, a big industry. A uh, big, big factory, big concern, and and it, and it's gone. You know these companies have have moved out, and you know what can you do to stop it in the first place? I guess is one question. But if they don't care, and and Councillor Devine's made a comment there, you know they don't care. They're you, you know whatever they plan to do is on a spreadsheet somewhere. They don't consider the emotional ties or the heritage ties, and they move on. I think it's I think it is incumbent on us to find the right solutions in place after they go. But you want to prevent that in the first place is your point then, I guess, Gary. Yeah, well, I, I, wrote, I wrote to the uh, 
the MPs and councillors at the time and ask them to consider, ask them to prove to me what the feasibility was. Did yeah. they consider uh, breaking down across the river? The, the infrastructure here, Andy, and, and connecting to the M8 and the river is far in advance of going across the Erskine Bridge and down uh, Joe Carriageway to Dumbarton, where yeah. it now will be. Yeah, I don't, I don't get the logic of that argument, and that was what their argument was. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, I wasn't, I wasn't anyway. close enough to, to Gary to, to know the detail, but listen, you know, it, it, it's there. It's a, a sad reminder, but hopefully, hopefully, what comes out of that, the phoenix from the ashes, is 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 positive. Yeah, at the time, it was the the last straw that broke the camel's back for me. The industry in Paisley had been def decimated. Yeah. For years and years and years and years, the mills go, Linwood went, Seba went, Shiva's is gone. We had, we had all sorts of other places, Andy, that you're very aware about. Robertson Jam Factory. Oh, right. yeah. yeah. The the Smith's Crisps, gone. The Spice Place across the road for it, run at Harvey's, gone. Yeah. Our, our manufacturing base and industry in our town, keep your eye on Paisley, manufacturing, gone. Yeah. And, that, and that's just a symbol of it. Yeah. Now, what we need to uh, think of and, and hope, and, and I am hopeful, Andy, that, that, that the site will be resurrected as something positive because it's earmarked, one, uh, for the, the leather guys, Smith & McLaurin are moving in. I think it's Smith. Is it Smith & McLaurin? Maybe I'll get that name wrong. Uh, the leather guys, they're moving in. Yeah, yeah. Bridge, yeah I know what you mean. It's Bridge of Leather. They're moving in. And it's going to be the base for uh, the the new Paisley Gamma. Yep. So, so if it's going to be the base for the new Paisley Gamma, then I, I, my my fingers are crossed that if the boarding up is done, it needs to be done right. Yeah. Because if it's not yep. done right, that place is getting torched, and it's going to be uh, in the ground, and we no. can't afford that to happen. No, we can't afford that to happen. You know, we really we really can't. And we've seen that with some of the other buildings in Paisley, you know, and obviously the one that was spotlighted on the programme is the old uh, REI. And, you know, the fear is that, you know, you get some fire starters in there and they, they torch a place. And, you know, before you know it, it's good enough reason for the bulldozers to be, um, you know, to be... Um, Kind of brought in and knocked down. We we certainly don't uh, don't want that to, to happen, you know. But uh, there's another one, Brown and Polsons. My father used to work there. Yeah. Um, it, 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 it's sad, you know. But I guess bringing some balance, Gary. You know, you could say that. Look at the high street. We talk about retail, and retail is never coming back back to the high street in the way that it used to be. There'll be mixed uses. There'll be residential. There'll be leisure. You know, the high street will reinvent itself. Um, you know, folk engage and interact in different ways. These big employers, these big organisations, um, change. They adapt. You know, the 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 thread industry changed. It offshore to cheaper cost base, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, that there's an industrial revolution, a technology revolution that comes through. It, it, is it not partly incumbent on us to be, you know, yes, recognising the heritage, trying to stop it if it's going to happen, but if it does, being part of the solution? Yeah, there is that. There is that. But, it, I mean, we could, I could talk quite a long time about that. That's a special in its own right, Gary. It is, but the social impact of this for me is is the the reason I, that I get a wee bit hit up about it because right. it's, it's you companies are companies, Andy, and and they do well and they get to a certain level, and I think when they get to a certain level, they have a responsibility to, to the community that has served them, and they shouldn't be allowed to ditch it. They shouldn't be allowed to tear that community up. And say sorry, we've got more more money to make somewhere else. Or, or they or they leave something behind, you know, a, yeah. a seed, yeah, they yeah. plant a seed for something to come from. Great point, um, and folks, you know, fantastic comment because and a lot of our uh, viewers are um, you know old enough to to remember some of the the big brands that were in the town, and you know you mentioned a number of them, um, and and it happens. Um, so how can we? stop it from happening how can we uh, encourage people to leave a legacy if they're going to go or perhaps how can we actually become a place that's attractive for inward investment as well so a lot lots of lots of interesting stuff gary 
that's the that's the big debate this evening. So we've started <laughs> something off. We're, we're getting into really serious subjects tonight, but we wanted to get that out of the way. So you've, it's out of the way. You've cleared the air. Well, can, can before we move on to our guest, I wanted to just dial things to a slightly more positive uh, moment about one of the other things that we we did through the uh, through the last week, which gave me a wee chuckle, Gary, and. Oh. It was um, using your predictive text on your phone. Don't know if any of you saw or took part on this, but you basically get your phone out and you type in, I love Paisley because, and then you just let the, the predictive text suggestions fill it in. And we got hundreds of these on social media. And I, I picked out a few to share with you this evening. These were these were some of the, the slightly well from the sublime to the ridiculous. Um, <laughs> I from CJ Anderson. I don't know who CJ is. I love Paisley because you know I love the way we write it all in a microwave. This is good. <laughs> this is all good. Absolutely, I love Paisley because I'm so happy that I've had my pancakes from Andrew yeah. Allen. Sharon McCauley has tuned in this evening and she is on there, Andy. She is, um, Sharon. I love Paisley because you know how to get a good one. Hey, hey. <laughs> I have no idea what Sharon is referring to. Uh, and likewise, Annette, um, a slightly obscure one from Annette. Uh, I love Paisley because I know that I will get a hold of you for all the good stuff. Hey, hey, hey. This is this is an interesting insight uh, into people's texts because uh, there, there was two that were quite funny. One was the, I love Paisley because I love the idea of a virus that infects chimpanzees. Oh, that's a good, that is a good one. That is a good, I like Julie Threw's one and it's intrigued me. <laughs> this uh, a bit of solitaire going on. Indeed, indeed. And I thought the best one, and I'm hoping that this was predictive text, but it was from Alina Spence, which is, I love Paisley because of all the people. Yeah, we are the people. How anyway, good. we won't go there. <laughs> <laughs> How good are they, Gary? They're just fantastic. Brilliant, Andy. Brilliant. We're in danger of overrunning. We're overrun. I'd well, let's get this. on with the show, Gary. What's tonight all about? Tonight is all about... Tannehill and arts and festival special things. And to set that up, Andy, I wanted people to know what Tannehill was and who Tannehill was and a couple uh -huh. of things. I mentioned last week or the week before that I played for a football team in my youth that kept me out the streets, off the streets. Now, somebody asked a question, who was the team? Oh, yeah, there's a the team. I played with Tannehill. 1968, Gary. Was that the year you Absolutely. were playing? Tannehill were formed in 1968 and they disbanded after 50 years because the P&D gave up the ghost. So I played with Tannehill for 20-odd years as an amateur, no very good, half-decent when I got older, football player. Uh -huh. So that's Tannehill and you can see the wee part of the badge there. Can you see uh -huh. that? It's a scribe. It's a, wee, uh, it's a it's quill. A, a quill pen. Yeah, yeah. Signifying it and giving a wee nod to the Tannehill and the writer. So when, because you play amateur football, folks say, did you run out of Tannehill's the pub? No, we didn't. We didn't run out of Tannehill's the pub. We ran wow. out initially. The Afton sponsored us and then we went to uh, somewhere up in New Street and then we went to Hamilton's and then they ended up in Tannehill's. So Tannehill's synonymous with poetry mm -hmm. and, and our poet or, or bard. Uh, so that's one aspect of Tannehill. And of course, if you if you're looking from just at the town hall to the left of you and across to the abbey, that's Tannehill's uh, statue. Yep. And of course, under there it says we dream the future from where we are. As part of a bit of poetry that that the boys who follow St. Mun put all round the town the last time St Mern made a National Cup semi-final. And, of course, just this week, Andy, we've made another National Cup semi-final. 
So I'm hoping that you've got your act together <laughs> and we're going to play that video that the guys had of the poem Dreams, as it's called, Andy. Well, do, do you want to... Uh, have you done the um, Scott Vick module and playing videos yet, Gary? I've not done that one. Let me do that one tonight, right, Andy. Well, just scroll well, down to video clips. Completely stunning, this. I'm going to get uh, another certificate. And, uh, yes. you will. <laughs> I'm on top of this. So it's just... You got same as pictures, but it's you a video. It. You just click it. Right, so we're going to lead into what this show is all about and all that stuff that we spoke about, all the Shivers stuff, so I forgot. It's in the rearview mirror. We're now happy times, talking about Tannehill Arts Festival, stuff that's out with my reach, all this highbrow stuff. But we're going to go, aye, exactly, you say that if you like, but it's true, it's beyond me. I'm having to dumb down some of this to my level, and it's going to be midgified. We're going to, we're going to midgify the Tannehill Arts Festival. <laughs> I don't know what that means, Gary. Nah, right, play the video. Play the video. I'll come clear in the weeks to come. So, in the lead-in to the Tannehill Arts Festival special... I dream, do you? It's the natural thing to do. Dreams have not limits. There's wrongs and rights. You can live a lifetime in the short hours of the nights. Dreams of love, hate and fear. Some are vague and some are clear. We dream of reaching for the stars. We dream the future from where we are. Good dreams do come true. And they're custom made for me and you. Okay. Beautiful. Isn't that stunning? So that I was inspired down there on doing a wee bit of research. I went on the Tannehill Arts Festival website and I was scrolling through it and I and I thought, wow. I, I recognized all those words, and it took me back to that that video that we've played a number of times. Oh, I, which is completely and utterly stunning. The way that the the boys and glasses put that together from the St. Month supporters, which leads us very nicely to what tonight's show is about, Andy. It does indeed, and uh, without I think further ado, because we have started to encroach on our overrun, uh, Gary. I think we're going to well, get our very first guest on. Waiting patiently in the wings is Alan Fleming Beard. Alan, hi. How hi, are you, sir? That it's so weird after what is it, fifty-three weeks of me watching this on my telly every Wednesday night and being in the box on the screen. <laughs> it's amazing. Oh my goodness. Goodness. The thing about it, Alan, you'll be able to watch yourself back over and over I... and over. No, that would be my nightmare. That would be my... <laughs> Do you watch yourself back <laughs> when you finish the show? You watch it again? Yeah, well, no, really. No, but you, maybe the first couple just to go, oh, what, what, was that? what was that like? Did we really do that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's uh, occasionally it'll pop up and you, you know, but you, you move on, you move on, on to the next guest, Alan, but it's it's great to hear that you've been tuning in for the last year almost and uh, and here you are, you're, you're, you're on the Paisley Community Chat Show uh, and you're so welcome to join us. Uh, well, it's uh, you know I I tell everyone about this show because like it's so um, interesting to me. Like you last week you had on Alan McEwen and even in lockdown he's thrown me work. You know he understands how important that is because work just yeah. stopped for for freelancers. And then a couple of weeks ago, so fascinating the Paisley um, Town Hall, how that's going to look, and you know because I'm always booking venues. And, you know, you, you, there's certain ones you can't book because it's, uh, you know, if you want to bring dance to the town, there's not a sprung floor. And he was like, there's a dance studio in the in the new town hall. Yeah. Uh, that that yeah. was a really fascinating show. I loved that one. Uh, good, good. Well, we need to get you to tune in next week because next week, we'll tell you all about that later on, what next week's show's about. But before we bringe right in, 
That's a cracking word, that, Andy. Oh, it's good. Bringe, it's good before, we, before we bringe ahead too far into the show, Alan, you know how this works. When guests come on, sometimes the audience doesn't really know who the guest is. Some do. And we give the guests the opportunity to introduce themselves and to tell us a bit about their background. And we're going to let you do that right now, Alan, if you don't mind. Yeah, I mean, it's been a year of Zooms, and it's one of those questions that you always get asked. We'll go around the room and introduce yourself, and my heart's beating. Yeah, you think, how do you how do you say it? What do you say? Do you say too much? And then people think you think you're it. Uh, so I thought um, I, I'm going to frame my story slightly differently, because when I was at high school, um, uh, so I was born in Paisley, and I'm living back in Paisley, so I'm a full buddy. But uh, when I was at high school, I went to, um, I grew up in Renfrew, uh, which wasn't the most exciting place to grow up. Uh, so Paisley was like the big city to me. That was where everything was happening. And I, I was sort of a tear away at school. Like I was suspended all the time. And really it was, it, I just hated school. Like I didn't like wearing school uniforms. I didn't like turning up. That was, that was why I was, I was always in trouble. And then I asked my parents if I could get piano lessons. I don't even know why I asked. And from that moment on, everything changed. So um, I, I became obsessed with it. You know, I was practicing like between six and eight hours every single day. Um, it, sometimes that's why I was dogging off school was to go home and practice the piano, uh, which makes me sound like a geek, but I wasn't like that before uh, I discovered the instrument. And then um, I auditioned for like the music colleges in London and I got a scholarship to the Royal College of Music, which is just about the best music college in the world. And considering that, when I was at high school, they were like, you know, that's not in your future. Um, and I was mentored by some of the the, the, the greatest composers that that were alive at the time. My my teacher was a guy called uh, Sir John Tavener, and he's probably most famous for, he wrote the music for the funeral of Princess Diana. Yeah. Um, and then uh, just by a chance meeting, um, uh, probably the, 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 the greatest living songwriter we have is Stephen Sondheim. I met him and I studied with him for um, for a few months and just everything, every door opened uh, it, just because I asked for piano lessons. So that's so much what um, Tannehill Arts is about is that uh, when I was growing up and there wasn't much going on in Renfrew, I would come into Paisley and I saw the Royal Shakespeare Company at the Town Hall. I saw uh, Scottish Opera. I, saw, I mean, it was amazing. Paisley, even Paisley... Um, Art Centre, you would see amazing tour, touring shows. You'd see like big comedians, well, for their day, big Dorothy Paul, I saw for a fiver in the, the, the Art Centre rather than pay the whatever it is, 30 quid to go and see it at the Kings. Yeah. Uh, so there was so much going on then. And when I moved back in the year 2000, I'd done lots of different music jobs. I'd played in West End shows and written music for television. And just it, it was like a dream was going on. And I just thought it would carry on like that. But the freelance life is not like that, you know. You, there's, there's, you, you're doing well one month, and then the next month you're like, right, uh, I should have saved more money from last month to pay the bills for this month. It just goes up and down, good years and bad years. Yeah. Uh, but when I came back to the town, um, I was like, you know, you can uh, put stuff on in this town. So I've been booking Paisley venues since uh, 1990. So I've seen it change. I've seen different management, different um, venues spring up. Uh, get the council change its sort of strategy, but uh, I've never seen it so so exciting as it is now. There's yeah. just if you want to do anything creative in this town, there's so much help. Everyone, there's so many networks. You know, that you've had on a few weeks ago, uh, Creative Connections and uh, Creative Rent for sure. You know, help from everywhere. You know, if I want to put some event on this town, I just email Alan McEwen and he's like, yeah, you can use the bungalow. You know, what else do you need? Yeah. Uh, so it's great. I, I love living back here. And one of your other guests a few weeks ago was saying, um, "You you oh, have been watching all the shows." I have. Yeah, I, I, have. <laughs> I, I remember more than you've forgotten. <laughs> the, um, one of your other guests was saying, "You know, you'll say you come from Paisley, and I used to say, oh, I come from Paisley,' and then you almost sort of apologise. Yeah, and yeah. now when I say I come from Paisley, they're like, "Oh, I saw a show in Paisley last year," or "Oh, I was there performing. It's got a great venue." You know, it, it's a completely different impression. Creative people outside the town have now. Uh, yeah. So it it couldn't be a more exciting time. It, I think it's a fantastic sort of story that you have there of kind of almost coming full circle. But what it says to me is, you know, you, when you were at school, clearly from an academic point of view, that kind of machine, because school is a little bit of a machine. It wasn't one that you kind of immediately meshed with. There was a different passion in you. There was a different interest in you. And, and, and thankfully, you had the 
presence to say there's something about piano that I'd like to learn more about, and and that really opened up the the, the doorway to your your future. So that sounds to me like one of those real clear things where you have followed your passion in life, and it might not be the most financially rewarding, but I would guess from a satisfaction, from an emotional, from a get an engagement, from a a passion point of view, it's 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 the best future you could have ever chosen for yourself. Well, in the lean months, I wouldn't say that, but yeah, yeah course, no, <laughs> it's it's the has been the most sort of exciting thing looking back on it, and as well, like when you're in lockdown, you sort of you do look back and you think, God, I can't even. It doesn't feel like I did half of the things I did, uh, and I'm bursting to do, you know, all the things I used to complain about, like the nightmare of. Uh, when you put events on, Gary will know from doing events, you know, there's a thousand and one things to do and you're like, why did I sign up for this? But I'm just, you know, champing at the bit to get out the gate and do yeah. it again. Yeah. yeah, but one of the things, Alan, that your background and the things you've achieved, that if you don't mind me saying, you find, you actually find it difficult to say what you've done and what you have achieved. Because I had to drag out of you for tonight some pictures to show. Give us some stuff, Alan. Like, oh, I don't really know if I've got anything. I'm not, I'm not quite sure what might work. And then you click on your website and there's all this stuff. I all know, but it, that's why things. I'm a behind the scenes guy. I, I mean, I hate, uh, you know, um, I, I just don't like being in front of people and all eyes on me. That's for performers. And I'm not a performer, you know, um, I, I like organizing things for other people to get that kind of platform. Alan, I don't know any behind the scenes guys that have got their own website. <laughs> I don't have my own website. You've got a website that's your website and all <laughs> these things on it saying, I do this. It's magnificent. Oh, see, I, you should have had me on sooner. You should have had me on the first week of lockdown because this is good for my ego. <laughs> <laughs> we weren't very good at the first week. Uh, we were just we we're just warming up, but uh, no, Gary's right. You know, there's a there's a, a, a fantastic body of of work that you've been through over the the years. Um, clearly, Alan, and and you know, right up to to kind of some of your comments there about putting events on and, and Paisley. I mean, you're right. Paisley is, you know, it's noted that such a, a ripe place to put on uh, performances and events. If there's something good on in the town, the Paisley people come out in their droves to support it, which is great. So I guess ultimately, you know, the, the Tannehill Festival is something that's, you know, being created and evolved. Can you, you, you tell us a, a bit about the Tannehill Festival for those that might not know? Yeah, well, um, so that's why when I sort of explained my story that I hate doing, um, uh, I, I started at high school because that, uh, I think, you know, uh, it, in in the sort of language of the day, they call it in, uh, quality of inclusion. It doesn't matter if you don't have money, you should be able to see anything, you know, you should be able to go and see it for a pittance because mm -hmm. um, yeah. the, the, the thing that it can, the doors it can open are enormous. Um, you know, uh, what am I trying to say? Um, so I always think I have this imaginary person in my head that, you know, they, they might be uh, a teenager just like I was and they've never seen an opera or they've never seen, it's not for everyone, but, you know, it has to be there in the town. That option mm -hmm. has to be there. Um, and I always think, you know, if they can see it done to a high level, uh, either people in the town doing it or bringing people in from outside the town, it's a career path and it's a really exciting career path. Um, you know, it, I mean, it happens with other things. I've been thinking about a lot uh, this a lot today. Is like you know, you hear it all the time. People say, "Oh, I took up martial arts and that changed my life." You know, there's it's something. Yeah. So that's why Tannehill Arts has got to be cross arts. So it's not all music. I mean, me and Tony, Tony, are going to have on later. Uh, you know, our background is music, but it's uh, wants to bring plays to the town, um, uh, spoken words. You know, con uh, more contemporary things. Dance. I know nothing about dance, but the town deserves to have a sort of range of things put on, if that makes any sense. Yeah, yeah and I, I mean, I think I'm picking up from it, and I, I flippantly threw in highbrow earlier on, and I'm I'm taking it back, because it's accessibility. Now, it, there is a perception. So we, we, where I come from, in the schemes, and if you said to your mother, I'm away to watch an opera, you'd, they'd think you were off your head. So, so it's bringing that 
tone, Alan, that you've just said there of getting inside that young person's head and making it accessible, making it something that you that is easy to do and easy to access. And I'm and I'm getting from you that that's what the Tannehill Arts Festival is partly about. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's about showing off the talent in the town. Um, you know, that's a major part of it. But it's also um, ex ex exposing the audiences in Paisley to what I saw when I was growing up. So, like, really great things, um, uh, great companies from outside. You know, it's not just all about Paisley, but as well, I want to introduce the creative people in Paisley to the bigger companies and say, you know, uh, come and meet the creative people in Paisley. Because even when there are things on in Paisley, sometimes they're sort of... Uh, parachuted in and then they're gone um but yeah i i, I it's a thing i feel really passionate about and I, I bore everyone with it like anyone that will listen so thank you for giving me a platform for your viewer to listen yeah but, uh, yeah it's so important you know and it's really vital that we you know part of the reason for this show and you know thankful that you have um you're tuned in on a regular basis Part of the reason is just to spotlight and uncover all the fantastic and wonderful stuff that is going on in the town. The town has got huge talent, and it's back to that kind of point that you made earlier, Alan. You know, when you say to people, I come from Paisley, you're almost sort of apologetic, as you say. You're slightly ashamed to declare that's where you're you're from. And the, the, the tide is turning on that, you know, really is turning on that over the last number of years that, you know, coming from Paisley is a hell of a lot more interesting than saying that you're from Glasgow or somewhere else. In fact, a lot of people who are from Paisley would have said, I'm, I'm from near Glasgow, you know, and they're not now declaring I'm from Paisley. And I think we should be proud to to, to, to wear it well. So I've got, I've got some information for folks down at the bottom there in terms of the, um, the, the Tannehill Festival and your own website. But can you tell us about what's, what's, um, a little bit about the history for, of it, how long it's been running for, and and what you've got coming up this uh, this year. Uh, well, uh, this the, I've had the the worst luck with that, as many people have. But I only did one festival, and then the next one got cancelled through COVID. Um, so in the first festival, uh, I I had to ask a lot of people for help. So a lot of people, I've never asked anyone to do a free gig, but for the first festival I did, on the promise, if if you help me at the first one, you will always get paid when we do it the next year and the next year and the next year because money will come. You know, um, Tony that's on later, she's a brilliant fundraiser. So, you know, she's great to have on board. That, so that kind of uh, money coming in. So in the first one, we had uh, some spoken words um, and, oh, and then me not being humble, I wrote an opera about Tannehill's life. Oh, wow. uh, we put that on in Paisley Abbey. That's one of those moments that, you know, uh, walking into that venue to see uh, something I'd worked on for months come to life and you walk past the Tan Hill statue and you walk into Paisley Abbey, which is probably one of my favourite venues in Paisley yeah. uh, until the, the town hall opens. Uh, that was a really, really special night. Um, and as well, when the lockdown happens, the... the the idea of just having the memory of uh, so much singing going on in that building with a uh, quite a lot of odd i was lucky that because uh, it's a fairly big uh, uh venue to fill uh, a lot of people all sitting together people singing on the stage it seems like another world um, oh yeah. things coming up uh well uh, this September, it's been because things take like a year of planning and yep. so for th this year um where everyone sort of penciled in with a lot of the people that were in the first one, uh, Evelyn that was on, Evelyn Laurie that was on your uh, show a few weeks ago. Uh, she's in a, a thing called Script to Stage, uh, which um, sort of workshops new writing, sort of drama. Uh, Karen Herbison you had on a few weeks ago. Um, she's on our, our, our committee um, and she's directing Tilly the Naughty Fairy that she was talking about when she was on your show. Uh, mm -hmm. That's in it. Um, the, the biggest setback is... Paisley has so many choirs and amateur musical theatre groups and rock choirs, and we can't have any of that because it's just too too risky. Um, I don't want to be the person that puts on a super spreader event. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course, for, for what's coming up. So, Alan, that, that's all been intriguing, and I'm I'm normally the, come on, we need to move on. I want to listen to you all, you all night talking about what you do in the Tannehill Arts Festival, but you're going to stay with us. Yep. We hope you can maybe have a wee break because we've, we've got question of the week coming up, and we'll allow you to go for a comfort break or whatever you desire. 
Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and we'll come back to you in 10 minutes or so when yourself and Tony will be on. So we'll Tony have a break now. Thanks for that first session, Alan, and your insight to your background, what you do in the uh, lead into Tannehill Arts Festival. Brilliant. Thank you very much. With you in five minutes, Alan, or so, five, ten minutes. Well, listen, Gary, we better keep moving, keep the momentum, but uh, Alan's just a fantastic person and, and clearly is a regular uh, viewer of the, 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 the programme, but um, it's great to hear what he's doing. But uh, we'll move on to the next segment, which yes, is, of course, will. question of the week. Question. Did, 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 if you forgot, the, forgot your theme tune. Did, 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 no, I tell did, did, you what, I showed an image earlier on and just as I showed the image, my tea got delivered. It's, um, it's, oh, yeah. Well, you 40 odd minutes late, Andy. It, it, it's, it's, I don't know, because a few folk were asking. Cheers. <laughs> what have you got there tonight? And it, that's a, an ostrich or something like that. Yeah, this is a memory ostrich. This is what my boy designed, and that's all my little oh. memory board in it. Oh, oh that's, that's fantastic. <laughs> What's the difference between an ostrich and an emu? Oh, I don't know. Oh, there they are. Wait, Andy, well, get on that imaginary Google of yours. I, 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 <laughs> I tell you what, though, um, it wasn't the ostrich or emu that caught my eye, but you, you seem to have company in it. I know. <laughs> you, you've left the Amazon delivery driver out in the porch for too long. Oh, that's that's my tools. I use him every day. That's uh, that's me back at work. This week I started work again, which is fantastic. Absolutely. You, you, you're running a, a skeleton crew at the moment. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get my coat. Oh dear, dear, dear. <laughs> well, <laughs> tumbleweed on that. So, Annette, I know you've been really busy because question of the week, the last week, um, kind of. It was another really well engaged question of the week. Uh, and can you remind us what it was about? Yeah, Matt, Marks and Spencers. Um, oh my goodness, what a hot topic. Um, still oh in the town, yeah. the community is all over this. 838 people voting and then 235 comments on social media. And it wasn't just one word comments, it was like paragraphs. It was it was crazy. But did anyone use a word beginning with H? Lots. <laughs> Andy's got a word of the week and he's not used it yet. We need to look out for it. Oh, yeah. What is it, the word? It's it's homologate. <laughs> you sure? <laughs> <laughs> you sure? That was the word. I've never used it. <laughs> yeah, oh, well, it's 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 right. oh, oh, well, so... Listen, I know you have to... I'll have to homologate the results of question of the week later. I will do that. Right, well, do you want to know the results? Go yeah, on, yeah. Then. Right, so, on. on. <laughs> so the th out of the th uh, 838 people, more likely it was actually 38% of people said they're more likely to go and shop at Marks and Spencer's. But actually a huge 62% said they were less likely to shop, which I thought was a bit of a surprise for me. Wow. Yeah, yeah. That, is, that is interesting. That is yeah. interesting. But there was a yeah. couple of people putting in and out that sadly, and, and they used those terms. Sadly, I think I'll be using it more because of, there's a there's a loyalty to the town centre. Yeah. Uh, is, yeah, I mean that's really quite interesting. I think it'll settle down though. And I don't know about yeah. you. A couple of things that came out quite clearly um, around the actual traffic. I think um, there, there's concern about the, the location, but not just the fact that it's, it's from the town centre, but they're worried about the traffic and getting caught up in the car park. Um, a lot of people are quite elderly that, that shop in the town centre, so the, the, I think Marks and Spencer's is going for a different market possibly, um, but the, they're worried about actually getting there. And it's not just about the distance, but actually the location being up a hill, the yeah, traffic, yeah. there's a, con a, con a congestion just now, um, yeah. and just the fact that they got rid, rid of some of the clothes uh, areas and stuff like that. But fantastic yeah. Yeah. from staff. I was, I was wondering where people are going to buy their slacks. 
that's it. That's it. That's what they want to know. But they did say that they'll just go to Silverburn now. Yeah. So they're less likely because they'll just go, they'll just drive to Silverburn because there's more choice. But there was a lot of other people that were saying, actually, it's more convenient. We only want food, so we'll just drive there, get the food, come back. Um, yeah. So And they love the food. And it saves them a trip to Brayhead. When that's busy, we can go to Beasley and go to... Um, you know, shop there. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. interesting, interesting. Yeah, very much, very much interesting. I, I noticed a few of the comments that were, uh, and and again, thanks everyone for for taking part in that. And and, and again, overwhelmingly, light, courteously, is a bit very civilized. Yeah, yeah, and even from the staff themselves, actually, they were they worded the, their comments very, very good and very polite, and um, saying that actually, you know, they're just even lucky that they've got a job. They were saying, yeah. but actually, yeah. they work as a family. They feel it themselves as a family, as they've been in Paisley and moving to this new store. They're excited about it. They think it's going to be something great for them and great for the community. So there was both sides on. Yeah, it was. And, I mean, and of course, there is we're leaving behind the the hole that is the M and S on the High Street, which is going to be a blow in the short term, and hopefully, there's something coming forward in the, well, in the future with the plans for that. Absolutely, Gary, and I, and I think you know when when the story broke um, of the uh, Marks and Spencers closing in the town, it was. I mean, social media went nuts on it, and then. We broke the story that the building had then been been sold and, and it's been bought by the um, the developer of the Paisley Centre, the owner of the new Paisley Centre. You know, from from what we've heard so far from them, we're really encouraged with what their plans are for investing in Paisley, investing in the high street. So a great opportunity there. But you know, ultimately, question of the week. Um, it's you know, a, a good to get our finger on the pulse of how people are. Uh, thinking and the debate is always good. But this question of the week, uh, Annette, coming up is a little bit different, is it not? Yeah, a little bit of unscientific and just for fun, um, out of curiosity, and and, uh, and that's Gary's words. He said, oh, we are oh. good. <laughs> <laughs> thought I'd use them. Um, we're going to do an unofficial um, PCT election poll. Oh. So, yeah, yeah. So we've yes. got um, this, yeah. My goodness, this is a this is a first, and the <laughs> finger is definitely will be on the pulse to be revealed next yep. week, which yep. just happens to be. This will be an entry poll. Do you, do you think? Do you think we're going to have? Um, do you think we're going to have Tom Bradby on the phone from ITN, Gary? Peston, uh, we can't have Peston on. I, I was actually, if you want to talk about that guy, I was a wee bit a. Uh, I thought he was all right at the start, but he's an absolute tube. <laughs> <laughs> so, Annette, what is the question of this week then? The Scottish Parliament, Parliament elections will be held on Thursday the 6th of May. You will have one vote and can choose from one of five parties. Which one would you vote for? And then no the choices are... Order. And they are in alphabetical order. We must stress... <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So Conservative and Unionist Party, Labour and Cooperative Party, Liberal Democrats, Scottish Green Party and Scottish National Party. So those are the five choices on election day. Who are you going to vote for? And just to confirm, Annette, when you cast your um, vote on question of the week on Survey Monkey. We don't record any information. You're not asked to put your uh, email address in or your text. So it's totally anonymous. Yeah, you're just a number. You know, the, the next vote, the next vote. So we don't have any details. Age. And, uh, they're just a number to us. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, this is always that bit of the show that I like doing with the, the QR code because I love my tech. So, folks, we'd be delighted if you were to take part in this coming week's question of the week. So if you've got a smartphone, get your smartphone up, stick it onto your camera setting and hold it up to the screen. That is, of course, if you're not watching uh, the chat show on it. And you or, should get on, on, on the radio. Uh, be on the radio, Andy. Uh, does it work on the radio, Gary? It's no very good with that. So Survey Monkey question of the week. Oh, it means it's slow loading, but it'll come up in a second. 
and then it'll ask you the question and off you go with your vote. And and uh, you pretty much after we show that you get you get questions up pretty much instant uh, answers in pretty much instantaneously, don't yeah, you? Yeah, I've just got one straight away. <laughs> yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Fantastic. Fantastic. Great. Is, is it for Eddie? Uh, I can't tell. <laughs> no, the local, Just local, local labour labour leader at the in the council. I uh, well, I I always get asked by the kids um, this question: Who do I vote for? And now we when we were we would always ask my mum and dad, mum, who did you vote for? And my mum's stock response was, I voted for myself. So that's <laughs> who she says she voted for. So whenever anyone asks me who I voted for, the answer is myself but that doesn't seem to be an option Annette, on the the question of the week no not at all have you got a polling not station like... around the corner Andy? No says no. <laughs> i've got i've got a polling station around the corner bushy's primary <laughs> next really to the like corner that. it's just it's just around the corner gary <laughs> 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 that, that, see before i go i was just wondering um if any of the audience um had the, the roundup campaign if they managed to help anybody in Paisley if they did then give us a wee shout out on the, the oh, yeah, this was this was something that we talked about last week where we were sort of encouraging everyone as the kind of lockdown kind of starts to ease off and places are open that the, the suggestion was that if you can afford it and mm -hmm. if you go into the shops and you buy something for four quid round it up to a five or if you buy something 18 quid round it up to 20 or whatever it might be so round it up. And listen, that shouldn't just be a campaign for one week. That should be a campaign for a, a wee while to support the traders. And yeah. Annette, you've been back in business. Have a, a few folk been rounding it up for, for, for you? Yeah, no, absolutely fantastic. The generosity of my clients has just been phenomenal this week. But again, I was just so thankful to, to get it and to see them <laughs> and to talk yeah. to them and see yeah. real people. Yeah. A, but I definitely had my wee mask on, so... Yeah, I got I got that a wee bit wrong this week. That campaign, I would oh. I've been I've been driving for miles and miles and miles and miles and miles. I thought it was a roundabout campaign. I've been I've been everywhere. Right. I'm only doing that. Right. Oh, dear, Gary, that's 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 the worst so far, Gary. Yeah, Annette, worst. Thank you so much indeed, and you'll be back next week to reveal the results of our unofficial election poll. I will indeed. Thank you. Right. Back hey, you better go and let that guy back home. He's starving. Well, hey. Barbara on to the show. And before we welcome Alan and Tony back to the show, we have video tastic tonight, Andy. Oh, I've, oh, passed, I've passed my video module. So hoping I get this right to lead us in to welcoming back Alan and Tony. I've got a wee video about it's in the flavour of the Tannehill Arts Festival. This might be a surprise. To Tony, because Alan sent me. I'm going to play it now before we welcome Tony on the screen.
That wasn't too bad, Andy, was it? To welcome back Alan and Tony. Hello. Hi, everyone. <laughs> hey. That was, what a, a beautiful, beautiful video that was. Thank you, Alan, for sending that through. And, of course, Tony, you were playing the most beautiful piece on the piano throughout oh. that. That was just amazing. Thank you. Yeah, I was, I was doing the pianoing. I love that song. It's gorgeous. And uh, among other things, Evelyn said in the chat, which is so true, Alan forgets to tell everyone what a great composer he is. He really is a fantastic composer. And I should know because I, I play a lot of his music. I've played his piano concerto. And recently, uh, the program that you just saw was a series of songs that we did in lockdown in partnership with the Paisley Book Festival. So they were newly minted. And the singer that you heard, Stephanie Strachan, she's a, um, in the master's program at the RCS. Uh, uh -huh. Her and I were in different rooms, in different zip codes. Postcodes <laughs> when we when we made that. So Alan did some technical wizardry to make it seem like we were um, in the same place. So, well, completely really cool. completely seamless. It was uh, beautifully put together. So Tony, welcome to um, the the chat show. Alan, welcome back again. Hope your comfort break was uh, enjoyable. But Tony, <laughs> um, some folk might not know who you are. So in time honoured tradition, as we said earlier. Um, if you want to introduce yourself and tell our viewer a little bit about you. Okay, well, I am also a buddy, but I am a buddy with a bit of a transatlantic twang, uh, as you could probably tell. I am I recently returned to the UK. I was born in Paisley. My family uh, were all from here. Many of them still live here. Uh, but I went off to pursue my dream of becoming a concert pianist. So I went from what is now the RCS. Back in those days, it was the Royal Scottish Academy of Music and Drama. I did my undergraduate degree there. Uh, Alan's story about being a bit of a delinquent was slightly different from mine. I was a bit of an angel. Just ask my parents. So I decided at school, uh, I was 16 years old. I knew I wanted to be a pianist. And so I went into the program at the senior school. Um, at the Royal Academy when I was 16 years old and I graduated with my bachelor's when I was 20. So shortly following that I went to Rochester, New York to the Eastman School of Music where I completed my master's degree and subsequently my doctoral degree and like Alan I um, have a hugely privilege to work with one of the finest pianists of, of his era. My teacher Barry Snyder was uh, Van Cliburn competition winner back in the day many years ago. So I was really fortunate to work with not only great um, professors there, but also my colleagues. I worked with a lot of string players, singers, brass players, woodwind players. And so I became a chamber musician. That's what I do. I'm a pianist and I also played in a professional trio for many years. We were signed with uh, management, artist management in San Francisco. So we toured for many years. And then I settled in San Diego, sunny San Diego in California. So I was a professor at the School of Music and Dance at San Diego State University. And I'm back in the UK and I'm currently teaching at the University of Liverpool. I teach classical performance and pedagogy and I also direct chamber music. So I'm back in the UK. But as you can imagine, in the lockdown, I have been teaching from where I'm sitting or yeah. sometimes from the piano, which is just out of shot. Yeah. So that's that's what I've been, been doing. Oh, just wonderful. Um, what a journey. I was going to say, and is that all? <laughs> oh, no, that's not half. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's something that's else. From <laughs> taking your passion, Tony, and, and thriving in it. Do you, do you often pinch, pinch yourself and think, whoa, I've, I've done this, I'm doing this? I do, and I'm, I reflect on how lucky I am. That was one of the things that, you know, Alan was talking about, his experiences growing up and having access, that, that word kept coming back in your conversation, having access uh, to go see and hear great theatre, great opera, and how much that influenced you. And, you know, in some ways, I, I reflect on my own story being slightly different in the sense that I, I don't know that really... At that time in Paisley, I'm a bit younger than Alan, by the way. Um, uh, I don't. Maybe I was from that, just that next generation. But we, you know, 
there wasn't really a lot of professional models around here. I, I can't think of another concert pianist. I don't know that I ever heard any concerts in, in Paisley at that time. And so it was representation is so important and having models and having people that you as, aspire to. Um, you know, I went to Glasgow a lot. I heard a lot of concerts at the Royal Concert Hall. I had an aunt mm -hmm. who took me to hear the orchestra. And mm -hmm. so I, I also had had uh, some experiences early on that were very forming and, and gave me an idea of, of what I wanted to do. I'm uniquely fortunate in that I had access to a fantastic education. I had a very supportive and loving family who were all about it. And so that is, you know, it's it's one of those things we talk about access, we talk about opportunity. And Gary, I was very upset with you when you were saying that our art is what we were going to talk about was highbrow. Oh, it back. So high about it, it, you it <laughs> speaking <laughs> from someone who is themselves a music enthusiast. You're a music it's enthusiast it's extraordinaire. Sorry, it's presenter's license. <laughs> but art is not is not for the it's not for the rich man. I mean, certainly education, training, access, and all those things can be very influenced by the yeah. background that you have and whether you have money and. Yeah. But yeah. talk about creative artists. We have actors from here. We have great composers. We have Mr. Yeah. John Byrne. We have some of the, the greatest singer-songwriters of the last half a century come from here. I mean, the talent's already here. You yeah. could argue that maybe the only thing that some people need is opportunity and some development channels. So yeah, that... I'm, really glad, I'm really glad you've picked me up on that because I, I threw it in deliberately. <laughs> I'm, I'm poking the bear here because it's a question that needs to be asked. And it is about accessibility and perception. Mm -hmm. And we that, suffered it, from perception it when I took it back, Tony, when I took it back, it was about, I'm not meant to access that. And it, and it is changing, and it's totally changing. And, it, and, it, and in some ways it comes with age. But what you guys are doing with the Tanner Arts Festival is, is bringing that entry point down. So the perception of highbrow will change. Mm -hmm. yeah, Don't you absolutely. Think? Yeah, and classical music, gosh, if I hear that word again, I mean, people keep talking about, oh, I don't like classical music. Most people haven't heard classical music. They've probably heard music that was written in about a 50-year time span that gets played on classic FM, but music is much less defined by one genre these days. Composers writing today draw on all sorts of styles. They draw on popular music, film music. Alan's a great musical theatre composer. Mm -hmm. um, composers' music I've played, they draw on jazz, idioms. I mean, there's so much music. Classical music is not limited by the description against its name as far as I'm concerned. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, it's widely sampled, Tony, as, as you know, and there's strings and there's piano and, and all sorts of contemporary music. So for me, it is about that accessibility because mm -hmm. it, I would never, ever have known that that Vienna track that I latched on to as a kid was so classical. It was just popular music done slightly differently, but it's, mm -hmm. but it's a classical track. Yeah. yeah. And Mid Ure is a fine musician. Yeah, for sure. And he's your he's your passion, one of your passions. And well, I like a lot of different music too. And, and I actually had a really good conversation with Gary a few weeks ago where we sat and chatted about music for over an hour. Um, so. No, that's what you do. I mean, it's mm -hmm. quite a tangent. What are we here to talk about again? Oh, <laughs> I think you're allowed to ab absolutely allowed to take the conversation uh, anywhere you like. And 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 Alan and Tony, what's the connection? How do you, how do both of you know each other? Clearly, you've worked with each other. So is it through work and through the the, the format? Did you know each other for a, a a period of time before that? What's what was the connections then? Ultimately, then leading to what you're doing now together. Um. Well, I, I should say that. I, I'm amazed that Alan and I never crossed paths before. And we met through one of Alan's um, roles. He's a musical director at uh, what was Stowbray, soon to become St. George's Church. Mm -hmm. And my family have um, been going to that church. My aunt was a session clerk at Stowbray, which was then the Leif Kirk. My cousin was married in that church. Um, my family have been going to that church for years. And uh, Alan is the music director there. And he chatted with my mother one day and uh, they 
decided between them that we should Alan and I should collaborate and that Alan was going to write a piano concerto which I was going to come and premiere which I subsequently did in the town hall with a or uh, community orchestra an orchestra made up of um, lots of freelance musicians from around the area so I know Alan through his music and I also came from San Diego for the 2019 Tannehill Arts Festival I came mm -hmm. with my flute partner uh, I have a flautist that I play with, so mm -hmm. we uh, we came and we gave a concert at the the festival in 2019. So that's how I found out about it. Yeah, and the and the Tannehill Festival then is was starting off, and you you were involved. Uh, there's some some aspect you were involved in, Tony, and tell tell us a bit about some of it. And there, there's a there's an image there of of some some of the things you were involved in 2019. That is me and my playing partner. We were on tour. Uh, we played in Edinburgh. We played at Greyfriars Kirk. We played at the Scottish Arts Club. And we also played at um, the Eric Liddell Centre in Edinburgh. We played a, a community outreach concert there. And we also performed at the Tannehill Arts Festival. We performed in the wind. And Alan brought the piano in. Um, it's hard to find a good piano sometimes. Uh, but it was he got a really beautiful instrument and we made a really nice recording. We gave the premiere of a flute sonata by an American composer, Daniel Dorf. So I was actually hired, a hired performer the first time that Tannehill happened. And I, when I came back, I thought, I wonder if I should ask Alan if he wants me to get involved in this. Uh, I am someone, as much as I relish the academic role that I have, in many ways, my passion for community engagement is is equal, and I find the two things to be very interconnected in in my life. And so, among other things that I did in San Diego, I was the managing director of the San Diego Guitar Festival for a oh. number of years, which was a startup, and we required a lot of fund fundraising. Mm -hmm. So I wrote what felt like endless grants and five years into the the festival it's now run by graduate students from San Diego State University and it's a hugely successful festival they have outreach programs um, around at schools in the area and they have some of the finest guitarists in the world so I I cut my teeth on the San Diego Guitar Festival but I've also done other types of uh, community outreach and engagement initiatives. I'm, uh, I was involved in the Summer Academy in San Diego, which is for young, uh, the San Diego Summer Music Institute, which is a training program for young musicians. And I thought, I wonder if Alan would like a partner. So I said, hey, Alan, uh, what do you think? Should, you, you need some help. <laughs> and so uh, we decided in the midst of a pandemic, which is maybe one of the not so smart decisions that we've made, we decided that we were going to incorporate the organization, which we did in March of last year. So Tannehill Arts and Heritage, Heritage is an entity now, and we're in the process of building the board. So the festival is just one of the many things that we hope to do. Through the festival, we'd like to have certainly for at least two weeks every year, a festival that brings in the community. We're going to mm -hmm. have really high quality high quality literary arts dramatic arts and performing arts and we're also going to have platforms for young aspiring creative artists particularly if they're from around here who need a platform to get their work out there and connect with their audience so that's what we're planning to do and then you know there was that pandemic that got in the way but we've we've been quietly working away behind the scenes and we've found some really willing partners other people uh, Alan mentioned some of them, the great Karen Herbison and Elise Kelly and Anne Scriven, uh, Sean Moore, uh, who's yep. a fantastic character. I've never heard him, but I've, I've heard that his spoken word performances are off the scale. So I'm really looking forward to that. And before I forget, Alan, I'm very surprised. This is typical Alan because you're, what you said earlier, Gary, is so right. He's so self-effacing and modest. He forgot that one of the highlights that we are planning for the Tannehill Festival is to have a supper, a Tannehill supper. So, oh, Alan, I'm going to let you talk about this. Uh, yeah, uh, I, that was one of the most disappointing things to have to cancel because it's an indoor event, it's uh -huh. having a meal, uh, because part of the reason I named the festival Tannehill Arts Festival is because I think Tannehill is just as good a poet as Robert Burns, but not as well known. And mm -hmm. so if we can name something after him, that will just put the spotlight on him. Uh, so we want to take the format of a Burns supper, uh, but make it a Tannehill supper. So instead of the Burns poetry bringing in the food, it'll be a Tannehill poem bringing in the food. 
Um, but see as well when I when I said earlier about being behind the scenes when you played that little clip, that's why I love being behind the scenes is because I don't have to have nerves or you know I just hand this music to performers and they just make it this kind of magic. Um, so yeah, I, I I love that. We we've got to do this one thing because um, if you oh, got yeah. your oh that was me. <laughs> we're branded. Oh hold on, hold on. I know. <laughs> oh, I like. <laughs> Paisley Community Trust, Tannehill Arts and Heritage Partner. Uh, uh, we have a wee, uh, a wee collab. You heard well, it here first. We could do it. We could do it very easily. I, I like Cheers. sitting on the, on the side like Alan does, and the and the warm the warm glow that you get when you see something that you've been part of coming together, finishing off. And people leaving the room happier than they arrived. Yeah, it's, it's part of what I, why why I put gigs on. Yeah, and I, I understand completely what you say, Alan. But but you're you're a different level and, and a different place for me as far as oh, that's. No. But see, see, probably one of my favourite albums of all time is the the Fairground Attraction album. They really only did one. There's a sort of B side album. So you brought Eddie Reader to the time. I mean, that must make you feel you, twice. You know, that, twice. That, yeah, that was yeah. that was absolutely super. That, but uh, you know, that we will. I mean, uh, Tony, you mentioned about you know um, setting this up during uh, during lockdown, and, and was it the smartest thing that you do you've done? But of course, you've got that capability to be able to plan and and and, and get really primed for when things return. And as we mentioned earlier, you know, the, the good people of Paisley and beyond uh, will come out uh, for it. From our point of view, piece of the community trust. I mean, we are delighted to be able to platform what you are doing, to be able to shine a light on all of the great talent that we have. Because I think we, you know, we don't often talk about it. And when you look at both of your careers, what you've accomplished, where you've travelled to, what you've acquired by way of talent, skills, knowledge, and capability, and then, and this is the most important part. You've not just disappeared and selfishly kept all that to yourselves. You've decided it's time to come back and support and roll your sleeves up and help make what you do accessible to others. That we, we need dozens of people like you in this town, and there are dozens of people like you in this town who selfishly give of their time because they know that there's another generation going through. They know that there's a talent to be... Uh, shared out there it's and 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 to, to both of you thank you so much for for knowing that that is a thing that you needed to do it's just wonderful it really is we're excited it feels like the beginning of a very long road alan always says that it's um it's not a sprint it's a marathon we know we have a long road ahead of us the funding climate changed pretty dramatically in the last 12 months. Um, mm, yep. Typically project grants that are available for artistic programming have been repurposed for COVID emergency relief for organizations who will lose staff and, and possibly lose a roof over their heads. And so uh -huh. things got really difficult, but what I would say, and you know, any grants, any of the four grants that I'm gonna write in the next three weeks, you know, if we're to get any of them, all of those, you know, Alan and I don't get paid for what we do right now. And when Karen and Elise and um, Anne, when they join us on Zoom, they don't get paid for their advice or, or their time or to share their connections. Everyone is working in a volunteer capacity at the moment and any money that we do get from grant funding will go towards programming uh, and, and we'll pay artists. And that's, that's really important right now. I think of everyone, uh, people have suffered in a variety of ways during the lockdown um, yeah. across sectors. Uh, but I think it's fair to say that creative artists were among the groups overlooked by the government um, in, in the last 12 months. Uh, and we have people who have to pay electricity bills. Uh, yeah, I've just, I've just noticed a comment coming in and I want to echo this. It's part, a part of a roundup campaign that it's incumbent on us as a, as a community that when artists and people come out to perform again, that we are brave enough to come out and support you. And it, mm -hmm. as has been noted in good times when something happens in Paisley and there's a performance in Paisley, the Paisley public come out and support it. Yeah. So we'll, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll be supporting what you guys do. And f fingers crossed you can put a cracking programme together this year and into next year and out yeah. beyond. Because bringing the name of Tannehill to the masses 
is long overdue, and that's another area to applaud you. Thank you for doing what you're doing. Yeah. No. One of the I things I didn't mention, and you guys said it so beautifully earlier and very movingly, Gary, when you talked about the building, um, the Chivas building. Andy, you mentioned the REI, which I walk past what feels like on a, a weekly basis now and, and the few walks, which is the few times that I've ventured outside. And, you know, the heritage component to Tannehill was very much with a view to taking these spaces and reimagining them um, for the purpose of, of creative arts programming. You know, yep. we have disused spaces. We have spaces that are falling into a state of disrepair. And it's quite exciting for me to consider how we could reimagine and enliven those spaces with, with the creative arts. You said it best, Andy, which is that we're not going to get retail back in the way that, that that we've had it. And so I think we're gonna have to look at the creative arts and culture. Um, we need, people need a reason to be in the town and and, and um, that's that's what the creative arts and, and culture does. I think increasingly we're also gonna have to look at being more imaginative about the partnerships that we engage with cross sectors. Mm -hmm. You know, creative arts and heritage brings in footfall, it brings in tourists, yep. it supports industry. And if you have yep. lots of ticket sales, you have, bristling venues you have jobs too yeah and, and that's so i really things, believe that yeah that's one of the things that we're really encouraged about in paisley um alan was mentioning the the show that we had a, a few um episodes ago where we had uh, the chaplain from renfrewshire council talking about the development work that's taking place at the town hall um they're going to turn that into a world-class venue. You've got the development of the art centre, which is going to be great. You've got uh, the museum in the high yeah. street. You've got coats further up the road. And then, of course, you've got our own uh, proposed project for a digital community hub in the high street. And that digital community hub will also have um, a focus on um, uh, screen talent. So we're, we're going to have a digital skills academy along with um, cinema screens as well for performances, not only in terms of external um, cinema, art house cinema brought in, but being able to give our young people the opportunity to tell their own story on film and have a local audience um, share on that. So, you know, this renaissance that Paisley, and I, I know folk might laugh when they hear that word, but it is a renaissance that Paisley will be going through and it will be driven by arts and culture, it's so vital that we all get behind that as much as we possibly can. Um, but Tony, there's a couple of, of, of um, folk that have appeared on the chat show, maybe not in person, but at least photographically uh, uh, from from week to week. And um, one of uh, our, our favourite images that we've shown uh, that you might have a, a sort of connection to is, is this image, um, Tony, uh, uh, where we have... Uh, <laughs> Uh, what is it you officially call him, Gary? I said that's Tom. Big, big Tom opening big Tom. Up the piazza. So um, you, you've got a, a connection to to Sean Connery. Is that correct, uh, Tony? The late great Sir Sean Connery. Yeah, I was. Uh, I met him. I, I'm going to be very honest. I don't know that he was expecting to hear a local accent. Um, I. I have a friend who called me. I was just a student at the time. I was in a practice room, probably practicing for one of many hours that day. And I got a call from my friend and he said, I've got a, a gig for you. And I was like, okay, you know, I'm up in Rochester, New York. And I thought, okay, where is it? It's in the Surrey Hotel. I'm thinking, oh, sounds, you know, sounds kind of swanky. I was like, okay, I'll, you know, where is, you know, where's that? And he's like, it's in Manhattan. I'm like, okay, well, let me see. I mean, do I have time? I could probably get the train down. And it's like, so this whole thing goes on. And I'm like, okay, so so what do I need to do? Now, among other things, among being a great movie actor and, and the best Bond ever, he was also an arts patron. And so he uh, generously had been supporting an opera singer uh, through his, his studies. And the whole deal was he was going to throw this party during what used to be the Dressed to Kilt week. Some of you may have okay. heard of that. <laughs> So the singer was going to sing an aria or two, and you know they needed the orchestra. Enter, mm. enter me. So they needed a pianist, and I said, Sh you know, sure. And of course, it emerged that it was Sean Connery was going to make an appearance, kind of thing. And I thought, oh, holy moly! So I showed up. You know, I changed. I had a like a a bag with me. I think I changed in the train station in Grand Central or something like that. You know, in the bathroom. You know, to go to this swanky hotel. And there was a bunch of famous people. I mean, at one point, Joan Jett was standing at the oh. bottom 
of the piano as I was playing. Wow. Um, and so I started out accompanying the singer. He, I can't remember what arias. He sang a couple of arias. And then I just stayed and I, I played for the rest of the night. I thought, why not? And I'm not really a... Um, I, uh, my, I've got great jazz colleagues who would have probably done a far better idea than a, a far better job than you know the classical kid. But I thought, well, it's Sean Connery's party. I'm staying. Fun. <laughs> so, Fantastic, absolutely. So I played, and he, he met me. He came up to talk to me, and he said it was wonderful. Oh yeah. Oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> but he is the man himself. I, I don't. He, he was as charming. He was handsome. Still handsome. Wonderfully so. And he was. I think when I opened my mouth, there was just a moment where <laughs> he wasn't expecting a Paisley accent. And at that point, my accent my accent probably would have been stronger than it is now. So, yeah, there he yeah, is. He was very charming and lovely. Very nice. Moment. Gentleman wonderful. enjoyed the music. He likes Cole Porter. I remember that distinctly because I played some over the course of the evening. So, well, And he's an arts patron, which well, is great. And I think I wish more people like that would use the platform that they have to support scholarships and, and support the arts. So if you're out there, anyone. <laughs> That's, I mean, that, that story in itself is, uh, is a film in its, in its own right. I can imagine panning round Grand Central Station and this wee lassie for Paisley with a band <laughs> going in and getting changed and go, I, I'm going up to play piano, by the way. And yeah, it's sweet. Yeah, man, it's, sweet. Yeah, it's awesome. And then you are way up and John Connery. John Connery. <laughs> cool. It was it was good. And I was at, you know, like you said, I was just a wee lassie. I was the band for the night. Yeah. So it was great. Really good, uh, good story. I got, went down on the story. Absolutely wonderful. Wonderful. If you need you to dine out in a story, Tony, then that, that could that could be the story. <laughs> Do you know the now, funny thing is I don't you know I people ask about it usually before I ask them because I think the pictures floating ar around in cyberspace. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Now, before we say good night to both of you, because it's been such an interesting show, and, and this program started off uh, a, a year ago as a kind of 45 minute, you know, quick chat for me and Gary. And, and, and over the, the weeks, we've added on time and time. And as we always say, is the guests who make the show, and, and both of you have been absolutely fantastic. There's, um, Alan, I've got a million questions about everything that's going on in the background, because I, for the last 12 months, I've been back-to-back -back Zoom calls, as most of you have been, but there's so many things in your background that I want to say, and what's that? And what's that? And what's that book over there? And what's that ornament? that you? There's so many things. And what's that uh, illustration of? There's there's tons of stuff. So we'll need to have both of you back at some point um, for, for sure. But um, on the Tannehill Arts Festival, I've been playing a wee ticker along the bottom. But if you've got a shout out, uh, Alan uh, or Tony, to people to either get involved, support you or whatever it might be, what's your kind of final parting uh, shout out? Um, Alan, if you want to kick us off first. Uh, well, you know, trying to find a positive with the, the lockdown is uh, it did give us time to think and uh, we've Zoomed so many people and uh, the organisations and uh, directors of other big festivals and things, but the people of the town have so many ideas. Uh, that Tannehill supper was uh, an idea of Evelyn Laurie's and mm -hmm. we, we were going to run with it. Uh, yeah. Gary, when we met him, uh, we were saying before the show started, Gary was the last person I met before lockdown. The last hand I shook was Gary's hand. And even then, I remember thinking, should I? It, the rules were you could do that, but I was like, should I be doing that? Um, but he had a great idea, Bu uh, Bu Dream, and uh, get him into a song workshop. So we're working on that. Anyone got any ideas, just send them in. There's it's info at tannahillarts.com. Any ideas are welcome. Absolutely. You really set the tone, Gary, because you were incredibly gracious. You didn't know Alan and I from Adam. And he met us in Brew Coffee Shop, bought us a coffee and sat and chatted for about an hour and a half with us. And I think he paid for the coffee as well, didn't he, Gary? So, um, and that really set the tone for us because I thought, well, hey, that's someone who doesn't need to be here, who's just coming to share his resources and, and share his ideas. And that's been the spirit, I think, with which we've sort of carried on Tannehill because we want to collaborate with people and we're very interested in the ways that we can complement what's already going on and what's already happening. And the other people we want to hear from are creative artists. Get in touch. We want to know what you want to program. Um, we'd love to, love to hear from you. 
fantastic. Yeah, I've got, I've got the details correct there. Info at tannahillarts.com. Yeah, yeah, that's a, a wonderful moment to, to finish on, a positive note to finish on. And what I've got to say is what a wonderful couple of guests. You're inspirational in your life and what you've achieved. And we thank you for coming back and giving back to, to our town. Absolutely fantastic. And it's our, I think this is our only overrun on our 90-minute show. <laughs> wow. We've never, we've never overrun on a 90 minute show. We've always been bang on or just before because we've overrun from the hour and we thought, okay, oh, the hour's not enough. Let's let it run on. This has been so fascinating, Tony and Alan. It's been fantastic. Wish you every success with what you do in your life and the Tannehill Arts Festival. Tannahill. No, yeah. Thank you, thank you so much. For, thank you for having us. I'm, a, I'm a fan of the show now. I'm on it. I mean, it's uh, <laughs> thank you for having us on. Because uh, if you don't platform us, if you don't get the message out there, then um, you know it's it's the people that get in touch with us that will make this festival in September. Yeah, mm -hmm. and and as always, um, you know, we have the privilege and pleasure of speaking to brilliant guests. Um, tonight is no exception. But as you can see from some of the social media comments that are coming in. Uh, it, it, you know, you've got a huge audience out there ready to engage. So, thank you to both of you. Um, we'll thank hope you so to much. see you again soon. And anything we can do to support and help, please do let us know. Thanks once again, folks. Thank you, thank thank you. you so much. Both hang, of you hang, about, hang about in the wee room. We'll see you in a minute. <laughs> we'll get you in a moment. Thanks, guys. Oh, what just uh, that's that's a two hour show, Gary. You, you, what a you, range of subjects tonight, Andy, and topping it off with two inspirational people telling their backstory. And that, that the thing for me about it, I mean, I, I said it earlier about Alan hiding behind what you've achieved and sneaking it out now and again. These yeah. these people need. A platform in the, in the town, and they need to be. Uh, well, we thank them. They need to be thanked more. They're doing yeah. fantastic. Uh, 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 absolutely, absolutely. And, and you know, when you think about the, you know, I, again, this is you know the theme that's come out of this for me um, tonight is 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 that proud bit of being from Paisley, and we we, we somehow have gotten it into our heads that if you're if you come for Paisley you're maybe inferior in some way. And that couldn't be further from the truth. This town, our communities are overflowing with talent. Tony made a really good point there about opportunity, access to that opportunity. We have to be part of that solution. We have to be able to support the opportunities to give our communities, young and young at heart, the opportunity to not only engage with the arts, engage with culture, but develop their talents. And then we've seen two wonderful people deciding that they're not going to keep that to themselves. They're going to come back and they're going to encourage that next wave going through. That's what we have here in Paisley. That's so, so special, Gary. Yeah, and it's and it's tangible now, Andy. Uh, and oh, yeah. I'll I'll finish on. People ask me, why why do you go and meet with people? Why do you do what you do? And and my my answer is always, if you can, then you should. Yeah. So if, if you're able to network with people and give encouragement, minimum, your time, uh, contribute in kind, and join in and collaborate. If you can, you should. If yeah. you're able to, you should. And I would encourage anyone who has who, who is asked to join in with something and maybe they're a bit shy about it, go and do it. Uh, if you want to lead on something, even come and ask us, how would I go about doing this? Who do you think I should speak to? Make the connections. If you can, then you should. Yeah, 100%, Gary, it really is. And, um, you know, we, we, just need to, we just need to keep supporting. And, you know, it was really... Um, it was so lovely to hear Alan talking about the, all the different shows that he remembers that we've had, and I, I guess on the eve of our uh, uh, one-year anniversary, which is next week, folks, 
uh, on the eve. It was great to have Alan sort of recall some of the guests that we've had on. And, you know, when we started this off um, a year ago, um, you know, would you ever have thought that you would have got 52 weeks worth of content um, out there um, to be able to spotlight all the brilliant things in Paisley? Um, initially, you think, well, who, who can we invite? But as soon as you start, you realise that there's some there's tons and we ain't stopped. There's a million more folk in Paisley. Well, maybe not a million, 80,000, but there's a million more folk in Paisley in Renfrewshire that deserve to have the opportunity to tell us and tell everyone what they do. And I'm just, I'm so proud tonight. I really, really am, uh, Gary. I really am proud. I mean, I, likewise, Andy, when I was able to get a few things out of my system and then move into a meet Tony and Alan again, and I'm inspired by them. It's great yeah. with them. And yeah, it's, abso absolutely. It's you know that that fabric of weaving through our town is pride in our, uh, our heritage, but also using that platform to build to the future. Yeah. It's, it's just fantastic. And as Alan said, well, it's looking it's looking bright. We've got a platform to build, and we need to do it together. Yeah, absolutely. We sure um, do. So um, next week, Gary, tell us a wee bit about next week before we kind of finish off for this evening. Yeah, so next week is our anniversary show, Andy, and it's just going to be an anniversary show. We're just going to come on and have a blether. For an hour and a half, we're going to reminisce, we're going to look back, we're going to ask some people who've been tuning in every week to come on and have a chat with us and to talk to us about favourite moments, well, maybe be the odd video, maybe we'll show something that's been on before. But just to look back, look back at the year, maybe touch on some of the difficult aspects of, of COVID, but I'd like it to be forward-looking. But it's unbelievable we've been doing this for a year, Andy. And as you said, the content's not been difficult and there's lots more yeah. to come. But yeah. every single week, all the guests, fantastic. And we're going to look back. So it's a retrospective ne next week. Cup a candle maybe on a wee... Are we cake? You think so? You think so? I'll maybe see what we can get organised, um, Gary, um, cake-wise. Um, I might know someone that might know someone that might know someone that knows how to make cakes, Gary. <laughs> Where do they live? Oh, in the house, Gary. Oh, it's not in the corner. <laughs> Oh, it's not around the corner. So I miss my, I miss my. You teed that one up for me, Gary. I completely. Yeah, never like it. Anyway, it's been I completely great. missed it. Fantastic show tonight, Andy. I'm so proud to be part of it. And pleased folks. So Listen. thanks everyone for tuning in tonight. Uh, appreciate it. Spread the word about Paisley Community Chat Show first birthday party next week. Uh, but from me tonight. Good night. Good night, folks. Good night. <laughs>